بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. I want to start off by saying all praise be to Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, the most powerful. It's only Him we worship and only Him we bow down to and only Him we turn to when we're in need. Also, like to send peace and blessings upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, I love every single one of you for the sake of Allah. Those that like me, those that don't like me, those that are Muslim, those that are practicing, those that are on the edge, those that are committing zina, those that are trappers, those that are in haram relationships, those that are smoking. I love every single one of you for the sake of Allah. And you need to understand that Jannah is full of those that sinned and repented back to Allah. Jannah is not for those that are perfect. We're not perfect. I'm not perfect. The Imam and the scholars and the, and the Muslim leaders and your neighbors and whoever it may be, no one is perfect. We're all full of sins. We all go through our own trials and tribulations. There's a trial and tribulation that you're going through, oh brother or oh sister. That if, if it was written for me, I could have failed him. And there's a trial that I'm going through that you yourself couldn't be able to help. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allocated your trial and tribulations to none other except for yourself. Allah wants you to pass. Allah doesn't want to punish you. Allah loves you. Allah gave you this deen in order for you to prosper. And inshallah wa ta'ala, you stand in front of Allah. And Allah told you on that day, the day where it's 50,000 years long. And some people are like, Ah, oh, brother, you know what? This guy is going into too much details. Akhi, I don't care if you bash me, you refuse me, whatever it may be. We're going to stand in front of Allah. But naked, bro. Uncircumcised. And believe me, some people are so sensitive, so I'm not going to go into what I would say. But brother, even in that situation of the severity of this day, you're not going to look at a girl and you're not going to look at a man and you're going to be pleased with what you see. Because Aisha radiallahu anha told the Prophet, O oh Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on the day when we're going to be naked, so uncircumcised, are we not going to look at each other? Are we not going to lower our gaze? Of course we're going to lower our gaze. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the severity of this day the severity of this day will make you only think about yourself. Tunnel, tunnel vision, Paul. You're going to focus on yourself. You're going to focus on the sins you committed in this dunya. I'm finding out there's a brother or brothers or a group of brothers. I don't know who you are, bro. Where is the fear of Allah that you come to the masjid during the month of Ramadan, during the month where the gates of Jannah is open? During a month where the gates of Jahannam is closed, bro, you come and you want to start chirping girls, Akhi. You want to get their number. You want to be able to get their snap. You want to be able to get somewhere, Akhi. Where do you live, bro? Just yesterday we buried a brother 22 years old. Do you think you'll promise another day? Nah, bro. Cuss me, bro. I've got a long life ahead of me. Yeah, I'm going to be successful. You're going to see me in a Lambo. Cast me, but you're not getting free, bro. You're going to see me drifting around. Really, brother? Really, brother? The moment you make this dunya your priority, the moment the, the Akhirah Jannah will walk away from you, you prioritize this dunya. You didn't just prioritize the dunya, you prioritize your deen. Oh, so you prioritize your jahili over the deen. You prioritize in a haram relationship your own desires and your arrogance over the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is my witness, bro. I was in such a severe moment back in the house that I was staying with one of the brothers. I couldn't move properly, bro. I'm in a lot of pain. I'm not feeling well. But the youth, the youth, came to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even if I was on my deathbed I would try to come even though I looked at the people around me said bro I can't come I'm not coming I can't come I don't have the strength to my head is pounding my head is hurting me my bowel my, the bag I have on my stomach is causing me pain and the nerve damage and brothers want to have this akhi brother please 
understand this, bro. We live in a time and age. But we live in a time and age, bro. Stop making your opinions heard. Stop thinking that you have to go online and bash every single brother, scholar, person of knowledge, your local imam, whoever it may be in your community, bash him online. I don't care, bro. You can bash me, I don't give a damn. But the fact of the man, Jerry Ramadan, bro, man, them are backed by your standing other Muslims. You're eating their flesh. And then you want to come and stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you want to say, and you, and you claim you wanted Jannah, but everything you did in this dunya was not from the characteristics and the manners of people of Jannah. Like there was a video that went around viral of me getting punched in the Russia. We already know who it is. We checked the CCTV. The guy that punched me punched me exactly in the same place where I was stabbed. And I got nerve damage, bro. You told me, you told me, if you was in that position, would you act the same way? You're a man, bro, go to jail. You're not a coward. Punching the next man. That is a waste man speaker that comes to your community and you go to punch him. And because I lost my mind, I said, brother, hold up. I wasn't talking to little kids. I was talking to a group of mid-25 year olds, bro. Five, six of them, none of them owned up. But we checked the CCTV. Where's Muslim Islam? Where's thinking good of your Muslim brother? And if you, my brother, are one of the people that stand to me and back by me online, Allah has to give you. Because I want to see you in Jannah. But the man that, that was a coward and punched me in the back, and you're telling me, brother or sister, especially sisters, let me not stop. Let me not stop. Sisters are this giant. I'm a giant. I'm what? Take the mic off him. Get your dad to come and take the mic off me, bro. Really? Is this what the world's come to, bro? You put down other Muslims. Muslims that believe in the same Lord as you. Muslims that they, they want good for you. You think I don't sacrifice my time away from my wife and kids to listen to brothers and their struggle? I know some of you are in this, I know some of you in this community. I feel your pain, bro. You're either getting bashed around at home by your parents or you're probably getting bullied or getting pressured into selling drugs. My bro, I feel your pain. I'm your brother, I'm not your enemy. We are one. The Prophet Sallallahu described this woman as one body. One body. If a part of you is hurting, bro, I'm hurting, Akhi. But why is it getting to a state now, Akhi? Of Allah, it makes me emotional. Why does it get to a state now when we're bashing our own brothers and sisters. Are you seeing what's happening in Gaza? Are you seeing how they get raped and tortured and killed because they believe in La ilaha illallah? And the people of the West want Jannah. And everything they're doing goes against the people of Jannah. And you want Allah to have mercy on you, Ak? Fix what's in here, bro. It is written in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not give someone good if they don't have a good heart. Question this heart, bro. Question it. Sister, question this heart. How are you behind closed doors? How are you in the group of your friends? Do you back by and question? Do you go out of your way to make sure you eat the flesh of your brother or sister? What deen is this, bro? Tell me what deen this is so I can keep away from that. People want to come to the masjid, drug dealers actually. For the first time in the masjid, some of the men here told me there's some people that's come to the masjid for the first time. Welcome, bro. Welcome to the house of Allah. We love you. We want to see you prosper. We want you to be one of the people that, inshallah, can open the gates of Jerusalem like Salah al Din and you. He himself was a giant. He himself didn't practice the deen of Allah properly. But because when he put the deen of Allah first and repented, what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? He used him to conquer Jerusalem. That could be you, bro. But forget about our way. Forget about what's our way. What's in your community? Yeah? Forget about you want to change the world or change the state of the ummah. How is your state in your house? How is your relationship with your parents? Do you roll your eyes and kiss your teeth and want to be able to that level where if they told you to do something, you get so angry 
you to burn it with faith. This is your mother that carried you for nine months. Your father that you don't see because he's outside grinding and doing his Ubering or working in a shop. And you have the audacity to put your father down because of, because of the hours that he spent away from you. When was the last time you struggled with a meal, bro? When? But this is the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will move forward with or without you. The deen of Allah will move forward with or without you. How many people are becoming Muslims? How many people, bro? Nearly every day, in their hundreds. It just goes to show, bro, this deen is not promised to you if you take it for a joke. You take this religion for a joke, you don't pray your five times a day, Maget Allah will take you, will place you with someone that takes the deen seriously. How many people do you know in your own community that became a Muslim and they surpassed you in the Quran? But you're a poor Muslim. How many surahs do you know? I'm embarrassed to tell you how many surahs I know. Why? Where's the effort? Allah and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated, it's the small things that you do that is consistent, that is most beloved to Allah. You read one ayah a day, consistently, that's more beloved to Allah. You give in charity every single day, even if it's a pound, that's consistency, and that's more beloved to Allah. You are getting your mother or father to take away, or get a takeaway, or take them out for a takeaway, to a restaurant, whatever it may be, every Friday or every Saturday, you tell your mom, mom don't cook this week, from now on, we're gonna go out and read. That's consistency, bro. That's more beloved to Allah. Not the vapes, actually. Not the girls you're talking to on Snapchat, even during Ramadan. Not the Insta DMs that you're trying to slide in. What are you playing with, bro? Make it make sense, Akhi. The Ummah is suffering, bro. And do you know why? The hell with social media. Social media has become a platform. If it's Twitter, TikTok, whatever it may be, it has become a platform that on Yom Qiyamah, because of your comments on what you saw, is going to speak against you in front of Allah. So keep going, bro. Keep backstabbing and slandering and backbiting, brothers or sisters. Keep going, bro. Well done. Well done to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well done to those that are practicing the deen of Allah to the best of their abilities. You ask me, oh, Amen, do you practice the deen of Allah? I'll say to you, not to my best of my abilities. I don't fear Allah to the best of my abilities. I don't worship Allah the, the way He deserves to be worshipped. So ask yourself this, bro. We're in the middle 10 days of Ramadan. And let me make it clear because I see a couple men here. While I'm talking, they're nudging their friend or giving a smirk. I'm going to be honest with you, bro. I'm going to say how it is. I don't want to expose you, nor I want to point you out because you're my brother. So therefore, I'm not going to embarrass you. But do you know those people that you sit next to? And they're nudging you. Like, what's this guy talking about? This guy is an ex-criminal, ex-road man, or whatever it may be. He's still in the state of Jahiliya. I think we all fall into states of Jahiliya at times. But that brother that's nudging you to make sure he wants to get a little smirk out of you to say, yeah, but we're on the same page, beware of that brother. That brother is the one that if you were to die, what's he going to do after your death? Is he going to do your sadaqa jariya? Or is he going to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pray for you day in, day out. He's going to go and approach your family and tell them, I am your son now. I am your son now. Your son is gone, but, you, but you've got another son now. Tell me what you need in order for me to please you and be at your service. That's your companions, bro. Those, that's those that want good for you. I've been to Janazas. Allah is my witness. Allah is my witness. I've been to a Janazah. We just buried the brother. He just gone. Man, them at the funeral when they get gassed up. Now, like, yeah, bro, no one record this. No one needs to put it on. They're gassed up. They're moving mad, moving proper. I can let the people record the reminder, whatever it may be. Anyways, by the time we took, I would say, not even more than 50 steps away from the grave, the man, them, your man, them, your man, them are already in the car park, rolling up a zoo, and bunny because they just buried their friend. Is this the friends you want, bro? Is this the friend that even after you get buried, they're now thinking about their own desires, I'm rolling up a zoo, 
because this soup reminds me of Abdullah, or Abdul Kaleem, or Muhammad. This soup may get you far, bro, don't worry. I'm more worried not about him, because he's above ground. I'm more worried about the brother that we buried. Who's going to do so at the jail on his behalf? Who's going to continue his legacy? These are your companions. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, made it clear the difference between us and the non-believers is Salah. I'm not here to call you a kafir, but if you were neglecting Salah, and you neglect it because of your own desires, best believe, Akhi, you know what time it is when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Tabi'een, the Tabi'een said something so profound, and listen to this carefully. The Tabi'een mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the angels with intellect. And he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, created the dogs, the animals, the haywan with desires. And he created the insan, that's me and you. That's me and you. He created us with both the intellect and the desires. My boy, you're following your desires, yeah? You're following your desires, right? You're following your smoking and your zina and chatting to girls, yeah? In the eyes of Allah, you're going to be as low as the dogs, yeah? As low as the dogs. But you follow your intellect that brings you closer to Allah. Even if you follow your desires that better yourself. What type of desires am I talking about? The desire of sleeping, because it makes you function. The desire of eating food, it keeps you alive. The desire of drinking, and so on and so forth. There's good desires that you can take that it benefits you in order for you to, if you do it with the right intentions, it's a form of ibadah. Did you know this? From blinking, to drinking, to sleeping, to having a shower, to using the toilet, to, to working, to providing for your family, everything, if you do it for the sake of Allah, it's a form of ibadah, and it will go on your, and it will go on your skull and your maqiyama. Now ask yourself this, what desires are you doing, O Muhammad, O Abdullah, O Yusuf, O Abdul Kareem, O Fatima, O Khadija, what are you doing to better yourself in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If you were to die right now, will you, will, will you be proud of yourself by standing in front of Allah and say, I am ready to enter Jannah? Are you proud of your outcome in this dunya? Are you proud of yourself, oh brothers, for you to go out of your way in a haram relationship and ruining other daughters' lives? Are you proud of that? Getting them away from their homes and secretly linking them? Are you proud of that? It's going to happen to your daughter. What goes around comes around. Like Allah mentioned this in the Quran. You think it won't happen to you? Of course it won't, bro. You destroy families. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to use you an example of discretion. If you seek honor, if you seek izzah in anything other than the religion of Allah, you're going to be disgraced for Allah. Allah will disgrace you. In this dunya and in the akhirah. Are you happy with yourself right now? Are you proud of how much achievement you've committed during the month of Ramadan? Are you proud of the man of Quran you've read? How connected you are to the book of Allah? You've been sinning for the past 11 months. 11 months in disobedience to Allah. 11 months you've neglected your family. 11 months you followed your desires by selling drugs and your zina and vaping, smoking, whatever it may be. It's time for you to redeem yourself today, bro, if you already haven't done it. It's time for you to come back to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not blame Allah because ask yourself this, I am miserable, why? I'm depressed, why? You're depressed because you turned your back on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same place you left Allah, Allah has a mood. But it takes one step for you to turn around and ask for forgiveness sincerely and Allah will forgive you. Even if you come to him with sins as big as a mountain, Allah will forgive you sincerely if you make tawbah. I dare respect the brothers and sisters. The ummah is suffering. And they're not suffering akhi, because we are getting battered from left, right and centre. The ummah is suffering because of every single sin. The ummah is suffering because we are away from the tawheed of Allah. The ummah is suffering because we lack knowledge. The ummah is suffering because we are not taking our time during salah or even, even, even going as far as not even praying akhi. 
You know this Surah Fatiha, and I'm going to want every single one of you, inshallah wa ta'ala, all together, all together, from the beginning, I just want you to recite Surah Fatiha. So, three, so when I say one, recite Surah Fatiha, Bismillah. Ready, yeah? Bismillah. Uh, three, two, one. In Surah Fatiha, you ask him for guidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that very so in the very next chapter, he answers that because it's a dua. We, we are seeking his guidance. Ya Allah, guide me. Guide me, Ya Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers it in the very next surah. Bismillah rahman rahim Alif Lam Kitab. This is a book. Clear cut, with no doubts. If you're miserable, you've neglected the book of Allah. You're depressed, you've neglected the book of Allah. Because guidance comes from this book, whether you like it or not, regardless if you come with your own interpretation, that doesn't matter, bro. If you don't understand it, you come to your Imam and he will make you understand it. The book of Allah is there. Through one of the worst trials and tribulations of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Qur'an was a shifa for him. Not just any surah, but surah Yusuf. My favorite surah. You know why? Because of the trials and tribulations of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah sent him and revealed surah Yusuf as what? As a comfort for him. When was the last time you heard surah Yusuf? Really? It's a form of comfort. It's a form of getting rid of your trials and tribulations for the sake of Allah with the right intentions. Read it, bro. Connect to that. Connect with the book of Allah. The Prophet وسلم, was someone, not just like any man. He وسلم, was blessed. You know why he was blessed? Because the Quran was revealed to him and no one else before him. Not Jesus, Isa, السلام, not Moses, not Yusuf, not Yaqub, not our own father. Adam alayhi salam was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Qur'an, whatever it touches, it blesses. It was revealed to the angel Jibril, and the angel Jibril became the best of angels. <laughs> it was revealed to none other than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He became the most favored and the best Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Over the thousands of Prophets that came before him. It was revealed on not just any day or month. It was revealed during the month of Ramadan and it became the best of months. And it was revealed on Laylatul Qadr, the night where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, rewards you multiple times. Can someone tell me the figure at least? Khairun min alfi shahr. Don't you understand, my dear respected brothers and sisters, if the Quran touched you and you implemented it in your life, do you wonder how blessed your life will be? How good you will sleep? And I'm going to end it shortly because Allah, I'm in a lot of pain. But Wallahi, I came out. I came out because I love this community. I came out for you, bro. I can't say I came out for you, sister, because I would be I came out for the ummah. Understand? I would be. But I do them things. But I came out for you. I came out for every single one of you. I came out for your smile. I came out for that heartbeat that you have. I came out for the intellect that Allah gave you. I came out for the every single breath that you've taken. It's through the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I came out for you. Oh Allah had me major pain. So for the next time that you hear something of a brother acting a certain way, it is from a Muslim that he acts in the right manner and makes excuses for him. But if I've hurt you, I can forgive you. 
I'm a human being. I make mistakes. So if I act and have traits of jahiliyyah, forgive me, my friends. But before I go any further, I just wanted to mention something. This is, this is an opening for every single brother that's here, bro. That's for the trappers, especially the trappers. That's for the trappers. That's for you and I, the fathers, the mothers, the aunties, the uncles, you name it. One of the things that helped me through my trials and tribulations was giving in charity. After getting stabbed on two occasions, kidnapped, tortured, and getting told I can never have kids, I spoke to my Ustad and my Ustad was like, hey, man. When I asked him, I said, I'm I'm struggling with something. He said, I want my own child. I want to be able to have my own child. He said, hey, man, give me charity. I said, what are you talking about, Sheikh? I do charity. I'm sending one or two containers. Yes, it's not out there in the open. I'm sending one or two containers to Surya every single week or every two weeks. I'm doing charity. He goes, la, 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 Dig what's in your pocket. Do not be stingy for what is in here. Because this money ain't coming with you. I said, Sheikh, say no more. I went to Santander. I gave away every penny I had for my name. Even though I had money coming in the next week. I gave every penny I had for the sake of Allah. Three years into my marriage and I was miserable. I was miserable, bro. I lost. I didn't lose in, uh, uh, in the worship of Allah, but I lost hope in Allah. I lost hope in everything. But Allah tested me, bro. Three years I was trying for a child and no child. After giving every penny I had to my name, Wallahi, Allah is my witness. A month later, my wife surprised me with a pregnancy test. Wallah. Do you question the miracle of Allah? We live in a time and age when I mentioned the story to encourage you about the blessings of Allah, the miracles of Allah. Muslims in our own community, Muslims in our own community have the audacity to say, my brother, tell your wife to get a DNA test, bro. Really, bro? Really, Akhi? Has this what the West has done for you? And changed and brainwashed you to such a level you claim that another man's wife has cheated? That the miracles of Allah is sahib, is smooth? Really, bro? The miracle of Allah from just giving allowed my wife to give birth to a beautiful daughter. And wallahi, I wanted a, I wanted a daughter of my first child, not a son. Allah gave me a daughter. Bro. Allah is just with His promise. And Allah was there for you. And Allah was there for me. So my dear respected brothers and sisters, you're going through a calamity no matter what it may be. Wallah, you give. Earlier, my Ustad was standing in front of you and he was asking for donations. He was telling me, SubhanAllah, there was over 30 people that wanted to sponsor an orphan. I'm going to ask you, my brothers. Wasn't the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an orphan? The one, the one that didn't even see his father. The one that buried his mother at the age of six years old, bro. Six years old. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided for him. And because of his struggles and because of being the status of an orphan, what does he, uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say? He said, the one that looks after the orphan is like this with me and your mother. And he points two fingers together. Now ask yourself this. How far are you away from the Prophet Matter of fact, how far are you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It takes one pound or less than a pound to sponsor orphans. And those orphans are those that had their fathers and their mothers dismantled, raped, killed, dismantled, and their body parts are all over the place. Those orphans are the ones that you see and because your heart can't take it, you scroll by them because you don't want to see it no more. Your heart has become hardened. Those orphans are the ones that are looking for you. And every single penny that you pay, they're going to vouch for you in your maqiyama. It's because of you, O oh Muslims, where I was fed. Because of you, O oh Muslims, I was clothed. Because of you, O oh Muslims, I learned the Quran, established Salah, gave Zakat. And I even performed Hajj because of what you did. So my dear respected brothers and sisters, if I've said anything to hurt you, forgive me. I love you for the sake of Allah. And I'm going to end it on one ayah. One ayah that is most beloved to me. And the 
الآية is بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال إنما أشكو بثي وحزني إلى الله I only complain of my grief from my worries to Allah keep your complaints and your grief to Allah أحيي. the more you tell people the more they're going to backstab you and tell the world about your misery and your secrets behind closed doors Jazakallah khair of your time don't forget to donate Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh I'm not gonna lie to you, yeah? This brother disappointed me. I don't want him to do no take me around. Nor do I want him to say who is your ruler that. That's my signature. So let's put him to shame. Yeah? But let's see what this community is really about. You understand? Are you not ready, yeah? Are you not ready, yeah? Let's put him to shame, man. Who is your lord? Allah! What is your deen? Islam! And who is your prophet? Muhammad Tell this guy to go to sleep. <laughs>